All right, all right. LDBC, it is your boy, the coach, and you're live, live, live on the Coach's Show, the Coach's Show Live. Man, <laughs> I know I'm late to the party. 16 years, y'all. 16 years. 16 freaking years that this woman, Katie Curry, has held a grudge against Denzel Washington. 16 years. Man, you know, I, I think about 16 years of how much time has passed. And, you know, you got to think to yourself, damn, a lot has happened. A lot has happened. Like, in 16 years, do you imagine, like, you know, we done had, what, two presidents, three presidents? Oh, we done had two presidents take this. I mean, we done had, what, <laughs> I know um, Osama bin Laden got captured and killed. We done had a whole lot of stuff happen, y'all. My goodness. So Katie Curry come out and she said that, you know, she did an interview 16 years ago with Denzel Washington and said that it made her uncomfortable. Now, you know, as a man, you know, or anything, if, if you never saw the interview or if you didn't even know who Denzel Washington is, but, you know, you hear some woman saying that a man made her uncomfortable, you're going to construe that, you know, you can misconstrue that a couple of different ways. You know, number one, he make you uncomfortable. Wait a minute. He makes you uncomfortable. So you think that, you know, he can beat the hell out of you. OK, I mean, that that uncomfortable. OK, or you think that, you know, he's making you uncomfortable because you think that he can be some kind of, you know, sexual deviant. OK, like a sexual deviant. Like, that's what you think. Like, you know, I, I'm thinking about this and all this stuff is rolling through my mind because, you know, if a woman said said that, like, I make I make her uncomfortable. That's the first thing. That's how I'm going to construe it. See me on YouTube now, you know, me, Genesis and Batty B. We we talk a lot of junk to each other. We do. But I feel like my, my intuition feels like, you know what? It's it's okay. We can we can have our fun. They have their fun. They get off, they log off. They don't go home and oh uh, well, you know, the coach coach made me uncomfortable. <laughs> he made me uncomfortable. No, cause they down with it. They say stuff to me, I say stuff to them. It's all gravy. Like we have that kind of relationship. Okay? But if you guys saw me outside of YouTube in a professional setting, or you know, when I'm training my kids, I don't ever, I don't ever mix the money. I don't mix money and I don't mix my athletes together. I don't, I don't do that because I don't care how fine she is. Okay. Or how good she look or, you know, how, how bad she coming on to me. I don't do anything. Okay. That's going to jeopardize my source of income. That's, that's another rule of coach Sheldon Harrison. I got several laws. Okay. <laughs> And maybe I'll make a video on my laws, the Coach Shelton Harrison laws. Okay, but that's one of them. I never mix my money and my place of work together. I, I don't I don't have pleasure in place of work together because that could cost you one of your sources of income. Um, but she was saying that. So I looked at the transcript for this particular interview. And, you know, when you look at the question, you know, she was asking the man some dumbass questions. Very stupid questions. And, you know, and I sat back and I said, dang. I said, well, no wonder, you know, he was answering the way he did. Um, it seemed like Denzel was the one that was uncomfortable with the interview. It seemed like he was very, very, very uncomfortable. And, you know, maybe I have to do something and, and really show y'all, you know, why I think he was really that uncomfortable. But he just didn't want to be there. You know, Denzel didn't want to be there. He didn't want to be there with her. It's something about her that made him like, you know, let me just answer these questions let me just answer these questions as straightforward as I can and then just get out. Because he didn't want to answer. He didn't want to do anything. Um, the thing of it is, though, she was asking him these questions. Like, she asked him a question, you know, saying that, you know, uh, y'all Hollywood folks. Like, and she she described him and people that work with him as y'all Hollywood folks. And so Denzel said, well, he said, uh, I'm not a Hollywood folk. You know, I, um, I'm an actor. My job is acting and I act in Hollywood, but I'm a human. Now, I don't know what she could have took out of that, okay? It looked like she was trying to find something. I don't know what she could have took out of that. Um, but he was straightforward. And, you know, he was checking her that whole interview. And I think that's what she had an issue with. You know, he was checking her. Um, you know, and he just didn't want to be lumped into all these people that, that work in Hollywood. You know, because Dendell has come out. He said before that, you know, <clears throat> I'm not going to no party. I'm not going to no wild party or, you know, casting couch, you know, to get a job. You know, he says, I'm going to let my talent and my skill set speak for itself. You know, I've heard Denzel say that. So <clears throat> the questioning was very insulting to him. The line of questioning was insulting. And he, 
you can tell the way he was answering it, he almost felt insulted. So uh, if you're feeling insulted, you ain't going to sit and do a damn interview with somebody who's insulting you. Like, the interview's not going to be well. And she didn't think that she did anything wrong. But, well, you know, people like her, I mean, people like her, like, you know, idiots like her, they never think they do anything wrong. They never think that they offend people. But people like Katie Kirk, of course they offend people. Now, you know, when I did, when I started digging up some stuff on Katie Kirk, I'm like, you know what, what, what has she done? Who is she about? You know, come to find out Denzel wrote a check. You know, he wrote a check. Because I guess Denzel, I guess he probably first saw where this was going. He first saw, and I'm pretty sure Denzel didn't want to be caught up in the news. So he wrote a check to a, a cancer foundation for her. He wrote a check. And, you know, you would think that, okay, you know, he, he means well. You know, he didn't mean anything by the interview. And, you know, and she said, well, maybe he was having a bad day. You know, this man done wrote a check, you know, for one of her foundations. And she still come out. She still come out talking about the man made her uncomfortable. Listen, <laughs> I'm going to tell you something. These kind of women like Katie Cur Curran, Couric, these kind of women, they're the most dangerous men because they can get you locked up. And they can get you in jail for a long, long time. They can get you locked up. And, you know, if I'm a celebrity, and I'm going to tell some of y'all celebrities, man, some of y'all are just stupid. Some of y'all are so damn stupid. Ain't no way if I'm worth millions of dollars, if I'm going to get caught up with some woman, that's going to make me lose my money. Are, are you crazy? Are you crazy? And I don't know, why, why some of these people, why some of these celebrities, you know, they be flirting. They be flirting with, you know, women that, you know, not even worth a half of the money as they are. Not even a third, not even a tenth. Why do they do that? I, I, I don't understand. It, it baffles me to death. And then they always getting, you know, getting into a lawsuit. And then they always got to end up paying millions of dollars for stuff. Some of the stuff is so innocent. Okay, like, <laughs> I just shake my head. I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't interview with no females. Okay, I would make that my rule. You don't don't inter if it's a female that got to interview me. I, I don't want to be interviewed by a female. I, I don't care who in the room with her. No. OK, I don't want no females interviewing me. That'll be my rule. If I ever make it to a point where, you know, I'm in I'm in a spotlight, I will not be interviewed by females. Nope, I never will. Uh, -uh. That's his Genesis or, <laughs> or or sports princess or during a, a baddie bee. <laughs> I ain't being interviewed by no females. Because it seems like females, they tend to take stuff that men say, and then, then, and then they flip it. You know, they take the stuff that men stay, uh, say, and then they start flipping it around to make it seem like that, you know, you said something out of context. Like you said something out of pocket. And, and you really didn't say something out of pocket. Like the whole thing that went down with Morgan Freeman. The whole thing that went down with him. You know how, you know, <laughs> this reporter, what's her name, uh, Chloe Mellis? Chloe Mellis, like she misconstrued what he said. And then cost the man millions of dollars with Visa. Well, basically, he was making a response to, to something that now Michael Caine said. And she thought that he was talking to her. Like, you know, that, that cost that man millions. Cost them millions. But, you know, and I understand Morgan Freeman, you know, he's a single 80-something-year-old man. You know, it's old men in their old age, old men get flirtatious. They get flirtatious. And, you know, every old man fantasy is to be with some young girl. It, it, it just is. Okay, I mean, what? Are, are we, <laughs> you know, he did another interview with a, uh, it was a pretty young a reporter sister, man. And, you know, he was flirting with her too. You know, I didn't think it was overboard. You know, and I felt like they had a good rapport. Like, you know how Rampage Jackson and, uh, what's her name? Rampage Jackson and the woman that do, uh, uh, Karen Bryant. Rampage Jackson and Karen Bryant. Like, they got a good rapport. And they can actually do some crazy, crazy stuff on camera. But it's cool because their rapport is good. They know each other. They're comfortable with each other. I felt like Morgan Freeman was comfortable with, with that girl. And they, they've done interviews together before. And she even said, no, he don't do nothing. I mean, he don't do nothing out of the ordinary. Okay. And she said she was single. She said she was single. He's single. And they flirting. I mean, it's, it's <laughs> you can't flirt with somebody. Like, I, I, I don't know. It, flirting, is that harassment? Is that harassment? Now, had she would have said, you know, I don't I don't appreciate this. You know, I feel uncomfortable. You know, if she would have said that to him and he still kept doing it. OK, that's harassment. But he was being flirtatious. There's a difference between being flirtatious and harassing. 
I don't know, but women just don't get this, man. And that's why, you know, some of y'all women be wondering, you know, why no good dudes won't come up to y'all? They scared to. They scared to approach y'all because <laughs> huh, huh, he harassed me. He harassed me. Hey, hey, I like that. Hey. I like your clothes you got on over there. Hell, I wouldn't even say that. You're a smart person. Because even if you say that the person's smart, they probably still come out and say, huh, he harassed me. I feel harassed. And, you know, women throw that word harassment around so damn much. They throw it around like it's, it, it's some kind of, I don't know, man. They, they throw it around like it's water that you can drink. And it seemed like every one of these women, these Me Too women, they trying to get paid. Every one of them trying to get some money. But anyway, you know, I found out something a little interesting about Katie Curry. You know, she used to work with Matt Lauer. Now I say, hi, dog. Why is she coming out? You know, she got a book coming out, and Matt Lauer is in that book. And you know, man, the book company gave this girl a $12 million advance. They gave Katie Kirk a $12 million advance. So it all makes sense now. It all makes sense. It all makes plenty, plenty, plenty of sense now. So she come out with this, the Denzel Washington story, because I know he's going to be in that book. Okay, she come out with this, and now, you know, Matt Lauer, <coughs> he, he, been, he been blowing her phone up. He been blowing her phone up, <laughs> talking about, hey, what's going to be in this book? And, you know, I guess she obligated, she can't talk about it. But Matt Lauer want to know what's in this damn book, because he in the book. And, you know, and I'm looking at this photograph, and I'm like, man, look at this photograph, y'all. Can anybody in their right mind tell me? that these two didn't get a little kumsi kumsa. Can anybody tell me that these two didn't? I can tell you right now, Katie Kirk and Matt Lauer, they used to be an item. Y'all see how he looking at her? This dude look like he want to eat her alive, man. He like he want to eat her right now. Oh, yeah. They had something going on. And she finna talk about it in that book. <laughs> oh, she finna talk about it in this book. And, you know, Matt Lauer... He's trying to he's trying to get another job. He's trying to land him another gig because, you know, he got let go for sexual misconduct, sexual harassment. <laughs> he got let go of his, of his last job. So, you know, Matt Lauer trying to, you know, he almost got his foot in the door with another job. And this book coming out, boy, that's going to mess him up. <laughs> Ouch. That's going to mess him up bad. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, boy, she got a lot of see. But I found this kind of interesting because this is the kind of woman she is. It's who she is. But amazing, she come out 16 years about Denzel Washington, right? Over an interview that he was just kind of like, he didn't give her what she wanted. And she ain't saying nothing about Matt Lauer right away? Hmm. Funny, huh? Or I wonder if she, one, if she was one of the people that was harassed. Now, you know what? No, if she was, she probably would have said something by now. And they seem to be, you know, like able to cohabitate or able to you know, coexist together. You know, it don't seem like that they were at each other's throat. I, I think they had some kind of romantic relationship. And see, she's interviewed some of the top stars. And here, you know, she in a in a, in a with Morgan Freeman. She all hugged up on him. Now, you know, we can look at this photograph and construe this as like, man, <laughs> boy, she'd be all over me and with money. We can misconstrue that, but I'm pretty sure she's just taking a photograph with the great Morgan Freeman. And there's other photographs where she's kissing him or kissing him on the cheek. You know, we could we could construe that as, you know, hmm, what's going on with this? But me, subject, I'm looking at this, uh, you know, she just hooked up and they seem like they're friends. That kind of thing. And Katie Kerr better be careful though. I'm telling Morgan Freeman, that's a horny 80-year-old man. That's a horny 80-year-old man. Shoot, Morgan Freeman might be like, yo, let's go. I'm finna knock it down. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but yeah, I found this interesting though. So now it makes sense. All is coming out. You know, girl got a book coming up, y'all. She got a book. Denzel Washington going to be in it. Okay, I'm sure Morgan Freeman going to be in it. I'm sure Matt Lauer. I know Matt Lauer in it. <laughs> uh, Matt Lauer, boy. Matt Lauer trying to get her to shut up. She ain't going to do it. And I'm going to tell y'all, if something happened to Katie Kirk, boy, they better investigate Matt Lauer. They better, they better investigate him heavy. I'm talking about they better investigate him real heavy if this girl turn up missing or something happened to her. But, but you know what, though? You know, feminists, women, listen. Now, y'all, part of the reason sometimes why good men don't come up to y'all because they, yo, they know that, you know, with all these Me Too movements rolling around here and all these feminists running around here, 
you know, it just made men kind of put off. That's why dudes online, you know, going through uh, dating apps. That's why dudes doing that. That's why dudes don't want to come up to y'all in person. You know, you have on your nice clothes and, you know, you're looking all good and you wonder why ain't nobody coming up to you because of stuff like this. Don't nobody want a lawsuit. Don't, don't, don't nobody want to get accused of sexual misconduct. It is what it is. I'm going to tell y'all a story. I know the other day, you know, the other day, I ain't going to lie, you know, I was up in Walmart getting some stuff. And so, you know, it, it was this female. She was in front of me. And she looked good. You know, she looked good. Uh, I guess, I don't know where she was going, but she had on like uh, a one piece, you know, like uh, she had on a one piece leotard, you know, and, uh, you know, I looked for a few minutes and then, I, you know, I just kind of like, I got to hurry and go. And so when she realized that I wasn't paying her no attention, she turned around and started talking to me. She turned around and started talking to me. And uh, we started, you know, getting to know each other. And she started, you know, telling me, you know, about her family and all this other stuff. And I'm like, okay, cool. Um, and then what did she ask me? She said, well, you know, how come you're not married? I said, because I don't want to be. She said, oh, okay, well, I'm not married either. I said, oh, okay, that's what's up. And she said, uh, yeah, because, you know, I can't find a man who can deal with a woman like this. And uh, see, I knew where it was going. I knew, and I said, a woman like this. I said, so what, you too much woman for everybody? I mean, I don't, I don't understand. And she said, so what you trying to say? And see, then I caught it. I knew, I said, I'm just saying, what are you saying? You too much woman for anybody? So you're going to turn around and flirt with me. And then when I even show you even a remote amount of attention, it's almost like, <laughs> uh-oh, uh-oh. She was about to throw it back at me that I'm saying something inappropriate. And I kept ignoring her. I kept on ignoring her. Okay, and I kept the conversation casual. I didn't say anything about, you know, what she was wearing. I ain't say nothing about her body. I ain't say none of that. And that's what you do to them. So you ask a question with a question. Now, if they down, if they down and if they come on and they, they come right at you, okay, then, then you know it's okay to kind of go in and get the number and then move on. But, you know, right now in 2020, if I'm, if I'm you dudes, man, look, don't risk it. And especially don't don't be doing it in a workplace like Matt Lauer did. Matt Lauer messed up what a twenty million dollar year job, man, <laughs> over something between somebody like, like I, I can't that that just that, that that blows my mind. Like are women are women that seductive? Are they that powerful that men just lose their mind? No matter how much money you get, no matter how much money you get, you can't turn down what's between her legs. I <laughs> I know I could. I know I could. Boy, 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 boy.